thank you very much. Um, thank you, uh, first of all, for inviting me to come and come and speak um, with you about social media, uh, community building, and the law. Um, this is my first meeting um, of the uh, BCS since I joined, so it's, it's something of a baptism of fire. Um, but I hope that what we discuss tonight will be of interest uh, to you all and will generate um, a lot of discussion. Um, I, I should point out that I am doing a lot of this from, from, uh, from notes today. One of the um, issues that I had when I was writing this um, was the speed with, ev with, with which everything's moving at the moment. And as I, um, as I finished another bit, something else happened that either completely ruined the first bit or... Um, or, 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 or meant that I had to expand on something. So I've ended up with something that's actually very note-driven, which I don't normally do. Um, and on that very subject, I really want to thank you for inviting me to come and speak on the 26th of January uh, 2010, which I'll make a note of the, of the date because this will end up on the internet at some stage. Because that's the day before Apple launches a product that, as yet, we don't know what it is, but it's purported to be a tablet device with gesture recognition that could prove to be a real game changer in the way that we um, not only interact with computers but also with the internet. Um, and what I'd like you to do, therefore, is the next however long this, this we discuss this and, and, and I present for, is basically to disregard it because by this time tomorrow, this will all be wrong. Uh, <laughs> but right now, it's probably about right. Um, uh, unless, of course, he, you know, he's just made a, like a, uh, an iPod that can fit on your fingernail or something. I don't think he has. But he might do. It might, that might be the one more thing after he's done the tablet. And we go, oh, wow. And he goes, look, and I've got an iPod. Um, you never quite know. Um, the, the, a couple of other points about the presentation. The first one is that I've partially crowdsourced this um, because I, I'm quite conscious having been to a number of other... Um, uh, presentations of people standing up and saying this is exactly what happens and this is exactly what's right and what's wrong but I know from using it that it's not necessarily so what I did as, as part of this whole thing was to actually say to people what do you think and so some of this isn't necessarily what I think some of it's actually stuff which I've stolen from other people um, it's other people's ideas and other people's feelings about social media and how they use it so it may jump about a bit. Um, that's kind of intentional and it's kind of reflective, I think, of social media. And the second thing is that I do concentrate quite a lot on Twitter. And I do it in an entirely un unapologetic way. Um, as you'll hear as we go through, my own view is that the move will be towards a more Twitter-based approach. And the way that Twitter has impinged on a number of competitor companies as well as spawning other competitor companies such as um, Foursquare which is, uh, and GoWalla, which seemed in many ways to take parts of, of Twitter uh, and, and use them for another purpose, really does show its power and its presence. But that's not to say that Twitter is the only game in town, and it's not. We've got Flickr, we've got YouTube, we've got Facebook, and all the others have got their place, but everything's very fluid at the moment. And with each step, the outlook changes. So whilst I may think that Twitter is the thing at the moment, by tomorrow, when the tablet comes out, I would have changed my mind. Um, so if he does, the other thing is, if he does decide, uh, and if your phones go, and he's making the announcement today, and he just brings it forward, I'm just scrapping the rest of this, and, and we'll wing it. Um, so let, let, let's get on. Let's get on with the with the presentation. The first thing I, th I think is probably quite useful to look at is what we all think social media is and who's currently using it. Um, one of the, the the presentations I've done uh, before about this was to, to charities, and it was meant to be very much that this is your first step. Come along, we will explain it to you, and and, and all the rest of it. And what it became quite clear is actually a lot of them were doing a lot of the stuff already, but they didn't really think about it. So let's just say for a moment, who here thinks they currently use some form of social media? That's everyone. Apart from, I thought I was going to say apart from Alistair. 
which would have been embarrassing. But then you went like that, so that's cool. Um, and do you, do you all have a preferred channel? If you do have a preferred channel, if you have something you go to more than any, anything else, put your hand up. No, the 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 um, the site. You don't have a, a preferred. Site. A lot of you do. Um, let's 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 take a wild stab at this. Hands up if it's Facebook, and then hands up if it's Twitter, and hands up if it's something else. Two. Right. I want to know what are they? <laughs> LinkedIn. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. The old style social messaging, I like it. <laughs> um, now, uh, it, everyone has a favourite, and uh, the, one of the things that we'll, we'll come on to in a moment, and, and it's one of the things that I think people don't look at, is this idea that Facebook is the thing. And I, I, have, I have a lot of reasons why I don't think Facebook is the thing, and I don't think it was five very long its current form. I think it will become MySpace uh, and MySpace will drop off the end um, you know, in the, into the little GeoCities memorial pool of things that happened. Um, and one of the things that's often said is that that's not going to happen because Facebook is huge, huge, huge um, estimates of multiple hundreds of millions of, 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 uh, of users. And yet, um, Twitter has a much smaller number, be it, um, depending on where you read, somewhere between 40 and 75 million. But the, the thing is that Twitter's been around a lot less, uh, a lot less long time, which is terrible English, um, but I'm not uh, an English teacher. Um, but it, it's been around a lot, le a, a, lot, on, see, a lot less time. Could we, should we go with that? Yeah, we're happy with that. Okay. A shorter amount of time. It's not been around as long. All these things would work. This is kind of social. Um, so it's, it's been around a shorter amount of time. So ne inevitably it's going to have less people. It's just the way it is. Um, but I do think that the, the speed of growth of Twitter relative to the speed of growth of, uh, of Facebook does suggest that Twitter will at some stage take over. Now... One of the things that I'm often asked um, is why, uh, as a lawyer, I'm quite so into social media. And, and we then will go through the usual, it's a waste of time, it's a name, um, it, it's, it's everything that could possibly be wrong with it. Um, however, I view social media and the shift in internet use over the past two years as, as a seismic shift in, in communication. One of the things that we don't, I think, think about as much as, as we should is that within the next couple of years, there will become a generation of people that have never, not, have never known a time when they couldn't communicate using social media. In the same way that I can't really remember the time before there was a computer in the house. I know there was, because I was about eight, and it arrived, it was a ZX81, it was in the kitchen, I remember it. It was cool. It couldn't do anything, but I didn't know that. Um, but I can't really recall that time before there being a computer. Um, and I think that the, that the the way young people use social media, they do take it for granted. It's there. So when there was quite recently uh, an instance of uh, an intern at an investment bank writing a quite scathing. Uh, report about social media and how relevant it was to young people. I think the one thing that it overlooked is that they see it as something much more fundamental. We see it as an amazing, incredible thing because we didn't have it a couple of years ago. But for them, it's kind of there and it's probably a bit boring. But it's basically a phone. Now, if I came to you two years into us having phones, we'd all be quite excited about it still. But it's really difficult to try and imagine that. These are people that have never known anything else. They're bored of it. We take the phone for granted. If someone was to come to you and go, look, I've got a phone, and it's got a cable, and it goes in the wall, you'd go, oh, well done. 
unless it's like antiques roadshow, and you go, cool, that's worth something. This is really quite a fundamental thing. And so I think we have to, we have to start thinking about social media in a completely different way. When I first joined Twitter back in t October 2007, um, it was a bit like talking to yourself in a sealed room. Um, the whole idea of engaging and having a conversation wasn't really that easy because there weren't that many people on it. However, what was clear to me was that the principal design features of Twitter were likely to lead to a fundamental change in the way that other sites worked. The move from Friendster and MySpace through to Facebook and then to Twitter marks a shift from application heavy to application light, from PC to mobile, from something big to something very small. But interestingly, it also is a shift between uh, private simple communication, being email, one-to-one -one communication generally, to private group um, communication along the lines of Facebook and MySpace through to public broadcast on Twitter. And obviously in that I exclude people that have got um, locked accounts. Google Wave, I think, is the next logical step in that process where you can integrate um, the broadcast, potentially you can in integrate broadcast, public group and private communication within one simple interface, um, assuming that it ever gets around to the stage where it works nicely. And my own analysis of the further development of mobile technology is that it's likely to favour the cleaner Twitter model of one-to-many communication and the clumsy, more time-consuming Facebook model. And that's also borne out, I think, by recent research which showed that 44% of people that use um, Google News don't actually click through. They read the headlines, and that's enough. That's enough for all of us. We, we know what the story is, we move on. If also, if you've got four headlines for the same story, you can pretty much get all the information in the story sometimes, so you really don't need to click through. But that's actually quite a high number if you think of the millions and millions of people that are actually going on to Google News each day. 44% of them not bothering to go any further, I think it's quite significant. Um, and I, I think I should point out at this stage, um, and so as to avoid any inevitable brickbats that I'll get from my Twitter followers when this goes online, um, that... Facebook use and membership really does outstrip Twitter use and membership. I know that. I think it's purely a factor of when each of them started. Um, so, that's a sheep. Um, tonight, I feel if there is a relevance to that, um, and I, I reckon some of you will get it before we get to, to the point. Tonight, I'm going to be speaking about three areas, social media, community <coughs> building, and the law. And what I'd like to do is speak to you in general terms and open up to a discussion, because at the end of the day, that's what the whole point of social media. And in relation to social media, what I'd like to look at particularly is how businesses can use social media. But the same principles apply to personal use and also used by charities and social enterprises. And what we've already done with charities shows that um, charities in particular can make good use of social media um, by, uh, for promoting their causes and also for um, putting together tribes of people who can uh, uh, do their work for them. As I wrote this speech, I realised um, that I needed a picture of a sheep uh, for reasons that will become apparent. Um, so I sent a tweet out. Here's a tweet. Does anyone have a picture of a sheep that I could use in a presentation? I'll give you links and credits and a lot of Twitter love. And um, people replied in the middle of the day, or so. um, but a lot of them were apparently just sitting there with loads of pictures of sheep, uh, which in itself is probably worrying. Um, <laughs> they, they replied, uh, Brit said she had digged them out, how urgent. Um, they she but I can have a seal or a fox, which is very kind, not what I wanted, but you know, any other random animal in a storm. Um, and Brett came back uh, uh, with another, how urgently do you need a sheep? Um, 
she, she, knew, she, she knows. She's, she's close by. She knows. Um, now, oh, actually, for the sake of completeness, there's a fox. Um, it'd be unfair if someone offers you a fox not to use a fox. I didn't need a fox. I needed a sheep. You've seen the sheep. The sheep will become apparent later. This is a fox. No relevance. Um, I do put this will all go online at some stage um, probably not so much about the fox we might cut that out when we, when we do it but um, the people that have given us the, the, the photographs are actually uh, professional photographers um, their links are on there go and have a look at their, their stuff because it's really really good um, and uh, if you decide to follow me uh, on the old Twitter thing later on uh, you will find at the end of the week I will be promoting them big style because they, they came through from me. it's very kind of them um, Vista just decided to close down. Um, right, one of the most fascinating things about business use of social media is, it, is that it's marked one of the first times that businesses have gone onto the turf of consumers. And, and, and not just consumers, but an entirely consumer driven environment. And by that, I mean that the traditional model is that the business invites you onto their turf, you go to their shop their office, their whatever it is. Um, it, there's a lot of psychology behind it. You're already on your back foot when you go to someone else's, uh, someone else's environment. Um, but this time, acknowledging that the mass of people using social media, businesses have moved into social media to find their clients. I'm so hoping this isn't a sheep or a fox. I can't actually remember. No, good. Excellent. And what they need to do and what they have traditionally done is try to engage, manage and embrace clients or at least make you feel that's how you're being treated the move for businesses onto social media platforms has been a tough process for two reasons the first being that many businesses are scared of publicly engaging with their clients uh, it, it, in any way um, engagement is generally done quietly to one side with no one else watching. I often hear saying, people saying, especially in the business environment, I would go on Twitter, but what if someone, lawyers particularly <coughs> say this, what if someone says something bad? To which the answer is, if someone's saying something bad, it doesn't matter whether you're there or not. In fact, they're probably likely to be less bad if you are than if you're not. The only difference is, if you're there when they're saying something bad, you might actually be able to answer the point. You might be able to do something about it. You might be able to make the bad situation into a good situation. And once you've dealt with that simple issue, businesses have to attempt to do something that they've never done before, and that is engage in community management. Now, as a rule, the engagement process is a one-to-one -one thing. The, the whole concept of trying to herd sheep Heard cats even. Sheep would be easier. I've got sheep on the brain, uh, which is a bad thing. And please don't anyone tweet that I just said that. We'll cut that out as well. Um, it is a, it's, a, it's a herding cats process. Um, and it's not something that businesses have traditionally done. They deal with people on a one to one basis. But they do it privately. Now, in this context, community management means making and keeping your customers happy. And if you can manage it, making them into your foot soldiers, but we'll speak a bit more about that later, what it doesn't mean is controlling what they say. Controlling means something completely different in this context. Um, and businesses up till now have prepared to use a control model when dealing with customers, although it's not something they genuinely uh, admit in public. Being responsive to customers has generally meant responding within our operating environment, not yours. Imagine then the culture shock of engaging in a social media environment, from a culture, from a, a, a culture of control to a culture of messiness, uncertainty and anarchy. And there is some anarchy. Oh, and we go back one. There is a great tradition in it with, uh, with PowerPoint, apart from the fact that everyone hates it, that at some point you go through, uh, you go through two slides. So there we go, I've got that out of the way. Um, now, in a social media context, companies no longer provide the direction consumers do. 
companies have to face up to the fact that whilst they can start a conversation, they can't necessarily control where it's going to go. And culturally, that's quite a difficult thing to, to take on board. The game has changed quite fundamentally for businesses engaging with customers. And the advent and the spread of social media means it's never going to change back. Now, what I wanted to do at this stage was to find a, a, a decent case study, because it's all very well me saying this, and I can think of some small local examples where it's being done. But I wanted something nice and big. And um, wonderfully, um, quite recently, Coca-Cola did exactly what I wanted them to do for the, purposes of <laughs> for the purposes of this presentation. Now, with no implied criticism, Coca-Cola have always had a very, very strong control on what people said about Coca-Cola. And that was a brilliant thing, because it meant they, get, they got to keep their message exactly how they wanted it. And the focus since the internet has become commonplace is to put it out campaign sites so that each product would have its own, um, its own voice in a, particular, um, in a particular environment, in a sort of hermetically sealed place where you could go and, and, and receive the message. And I, I, can't, I, I really can't say enough that this isn't a, a criticism because traditional marketing techniques have always been about talking at people. They've been about getting people to come to you and then pushing your message directly in their face. Even when you start invoking emotional and psychological techniques, it is always about putting things on to people rather than engaging with them on a two-way process. So Coca-Cola have used campaign sites, but more recently they announced that they are um, on the move. And Coca-Cola have decided that it's good to talk. In, now, this is um, the uh, Interactive Marketing Manager for Europe, uh, who's, who said, in mo in, I'll read this out for you, in some cases, some of our campaigns won't need a Coke.com hosted site. In most cases, these will still exist, as it's the most obvious destination for consumer, but it might only be a page linking to a YouTube, uh, a YouTube page, uh, encouraging people to join the community there. Uh, we would like to place our activities and brands where people are, rather than dragging them onto our platform. This is Coke, right? This isn't, this isn't my local sweet shop saying we can't drag people on anymore. This is Coke. There, there is pretty much no bigger brand. And they've given up. They won't admit that. But they have. They've said, we can't actually drag people anymore. We're going to go to them. We will go to their site. So actually now, your Coke-branded experience is probably on Facebook. Or it may be engaging on Twitter. But for Coke to say that, that this isn't working anymore is quite a massive thing. Um, and we know that Unilever and another, uh, some other very large um, uh, brand owners are doing exactly the same. Now, the other wonderful thing that they've done is that they've actually published online, and I, I really do suggest you, you go and put it into Google, that they've actually published their online social media principles. Um, and you can go and you can download it, print it off, um, and, and it, it, it tells you exactly what you need to do. Um, it, it kind of, it, it's, it's kind of worrying for people to go around and tell people what to do. This is really good. It's, it's two pages. Uh, which, is, which is a great thing for a start, because normally you get a book. Um, uh, and it, it's so clear. And we'll, we'll, we'll go through some, some of the bits of it on here. But it really is um, worth taking a look at. Now, these are some of the key, um, the key ideas that are mentioned in, that, in those social media principles. Leadership, collaboration, integrity, being real, accountability, passion, diversity, quality. Now, I can't help but think, and again, this is no criticism of Coca-Cola. I doubt many of us would think of writing these down as 
Coca-Cola's, mar uh, Coca-Cola's marketing strategy. Passion may be integrity being real. These are actually the instructions for going online. These are the things that you need to do. You need to be transparent. You need to keep it real. You need to be a real voice. You're now an ambassador for Coca-Cola. Other colas are available. Um, but you're a person. You're a real, actual person. You're still going to be pushing the brand. But you're now personalising. You're now having a conversation with people. And this, I keep coming back to it, this is the biggest brand there is that can't do it in the traditional way anymore and they want to talk for the first time. They've decided to go out and have a chat with people. Um, which I think is, a, is just a fascinating thing. Another sheep. Um, I should explain that uh, this, uh, Phil Price is one of my co-hosts on, on Photo Legal. This is a Norwegian sheep. The last one was a Devon sheep. But ironically, the last one was a Devon sheep uh, and the photo was taken by a Swedish person. So, you know, it's all about it. I didn't think there were any other sheep. I can't remember if there were any other sheep. Uh, I should probably explain the sheep. Okay, one of the, th- one of the real things that I have a problem with about Facebook and one of the things that I think will push people more towards Twitter, um, and I do mention this again later on, is that on Facebook, people throw sheep. Now, I have managed to get 20-something years through my life before I joined Facebook where nobody threw a sheep at me in real life. Uh, maybe it's, yeah, you know, I grew up partly in London. I don't know. Uh, there weren't many sheep go around. I don't know what happens in the rest of the world. What I'm saying is, throwing sheep is not a normal thing to be doing. And when you look at the iPhone Facebook application, you can't throw sheep. Because actually, it's not really a good communication thing to do. On Facebook, all folks in real life. So don't throw sheep at people. I'm saying. It's a pointless thing, but the sheep thing is quite important. As we go forward, there will be less throwing of animals, generally, on the internet. I sounded a bit like Jerry Springer then, didn't I? (laughs) I, It's to do with focusing on communication, which is what this is all about. And if you look at the way that that Facebook is developing its iPhone application at the moment, they are cutting out a lot of things that are completely unnecessary. Now, the sheep-throwing thing has pretty much been there at the start, and I can't think of anything more unnecessary than throwing sheep sheep and throwing at you and you get an email saying such and such is throwing a sheep at you and then you think why that's just this is social networking right yeah yeah, yeah. But, but the, the, the point of social networking is a communication thing that, that breaks down a lot of barriers um, it can break down geographic barriers, um, even if they're actually not that big. It's, it's an easy way of communicating on a broadcast, in a broadcast way to numerous people quickly. Um, so if you're trying to, if you're trying to um, maintain a network of people, or to uh, and whatever sort of network that may be, whether it's a business network or a social network or whatever you will find that actually the conversation that you have may be relevant to a number of people. So you can use that to, you can use that, the, the tools that are available to share that particular piece of information. C- can we... So, so, so targeted broadcast. Targeted broadcast, yeah. Tar- targeted broadcasts or um, non-targeted broadcasts. You can do both. If you think about YouTube and Flickr, um, you can, um, you, well, and also... Uh, and also Twitter, they're actually all, no, they're all non-targeted uh, broadcast. Although you can actually fence um, stuff on, on YouTube and, Twi- uh, and Flickr, but people just don't. Um, go on. Um, well, there, there are two things. One is that um, it enables you, I think, a lot 
uh, a, a, in a lot simpler way to uh, broadcast a message to a number of people. And the other is it allows other people to find people of like mind. So where, for instance, um, I host a, um, a, a podcast on photography and photography law, uh, people will know that quite often I will tweet about things to do with photography. So I will tweet about, um, for instance, photographers getting arrested under Section 44 of the Terrorism Act. People will be looking for certain key phrases. Um, one photographer may... Um, so, so say I have um, within my within my group of uh, group of followers about 600 and something odd people, right? One of the photographers there may have 500 people of their own, right? Now we may share 200 of those, but he may share my message with all of his people, so it will get them broadcast to them. So those people will know that I then. Uh, discuss photography issues and then they can join with me. So you, you've also got this thing of sharing like, uh, like, mi like minded ideas. You can now block, interestingly, whenever we've done a um, whenever we've done a social media seminar and we've asked people about uh, which social media um, uh, which social media tools they use no one has yet said I blog, but actually a blog is a perfectly acceptable social media tool. It's just that it's not one of the branded ones. So yeah, I mean, bl blogging is a, is a is a is actually a really good example of a social media tool. Sorry. I can't help feeling that throwing sheep on Facebook is the modern high tech equivalent of debugging a heater. Within any generation, there will be a certain group who will find this incredibly entertaining. I just hope that Darwin disagrees. <laughs> oh, you old Horovians always get us. <laughs> um, where are we? Just okay. If we can just do a bit of, uh, just have a quick talk about community building and a quick talk about the law, um, and then we'll open it up into a into a, a big real, non-virtual social media experiment in the sense that we will talk uh, and, and uh, we'll, 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 we'll answer more questions. Um, I think one thing that everyone needs to know when using social media for any purpose is how to build your community group up. And once you know that, uh, the rest of it's easy. Um, the only... Uh, problem is that no one quite knows how to do it. Y you can you can you can build a, a, a seed of a group up um, with with relative ease, um, and we come back to the central message of all social media is is about engagement and it's about people. And, but there isn't a one size fits all solution as to how you build your community up, or how you have uh, how you have the conversation. The tone of conversation that you have is going to be different for each social media outlet. It's going to be different depending on who your audience is. So, um, for a, a, a social, uh, for a broadcaster, for instance, who is aiming at uh, 14 to 18 year olds, the tone of the conversation is not going to be the same uh, for uh, as a company that's <coughs> aiming at over 60 year olds. But there are some common threads uh, that work everywhere. The first one is that you have to accept that what you do isn't going to be quick. There's no easy solution uh, to it here. And you can take some considerable months in building up uh, your uh, group, your follower group. But there is a truism that big tribes grow from a few good foot soldiers. When you start out, you'll know that some people on whichever social network you use, oh, sorry, you'll know some people on whichever social network you use, and that's inevitable. Some people that you know will already be there. They may be personal friends, clients, 
trustees, donors, uh, business acquaintances, or just people you know from the pub. They are your foot soldiers. They are the people that you can ask for a quick favour. And you can ask them to join your tribe and to spread your message, to tell people that you're there and what it is that you're interested in. So if you have 100 friends on Facebook and you ask 10 of them to spread the message to their 100 friends, which is a one-stop process, you've immediately got 1,100 people. Now, of course, that's just a theory, but, and the theories don't generally work. So, a few months ago, um, we were holding a social media for charities um, seminar, and I thought it might be fun to build a tribe. Um, the only slight problem with this is I only had the idea about two hours before the seminar, um, and as I've already told you, it takes months to get right. What I wanted to show them was how you could use your tribe and other people's tribe to spread a message. And I decided that I would spread a very simple message as far away around the world as I could by the time that the seminar started at 3 o'clock. And I decided this on my walk down to Herbie's, which is a very good vegetarian restaurant in Exeter. And so I sent a message to my followers. And it read, Help, I'm running a seminar and want to show how far a tweet can go. We're in Devon, UK. Please RT, which means retweet, tar, charity SM, with a little charity SM hashtag. I'm just going to see whether I've actually done the slide for this. I'm not sure I have. Um, I clicked send. I sat back. I had my soup. I clicked clicking refresh to see what was happening. Now, within a minute, that tweet was in Manchester, um, thanks to a good friend of mine uh, who I went to law college with. And if I'm being honest, I wasn't quite prepared for what happened next. Within 20 minutes, I heard um, from someone called uh, Kimriska Darken uh, in Stockholm, in Sweden. Um, and then we went on a tour of the world, taking in France, Florida, quite a lot of Florida, Texas, quite a lot of Texas, New York City, lots of the rest of the states of the US, South Africa, Ethiopia, Romania, and then a number of other countries before we hit Southwest Australia. It took under three hours for that to happen, and that's my tribe. I know probably ten of them, but they all did me a favour. They all just passed the message on. And I was quite chuffed, because it proves the point. It can be done really, really quickly. Um, those people are all over the world. Um, I, I really didn't expect it to go as far as it did. I probably thought it might get to America. I wasn't entirely sure, because I thought they were probably just waking up. I didn't think it would get to Australia. I certainly didn't think it would get to Ethiopia. That was strange. I don't know why. I just didn't expect it to get there. So that message was spread by my tribe, my, tri my tribe's tribe, by their tribe, and so on, until it went halfway around the world. And many of those people now are part of my direct tribe. They've now joined me, and, um, uh, and they're part of, of my group, and we discuss things. Uh, and, and there's more about that whole story on, on my blog, and there'll be details of that later on. Now, the next issue is how to keep them, because it's all very well doing something like this, and, and this of course it went on after this because the problem with sending something out like that is it just carries on in the ether and it is, it's finally it has petered out fortunately because I was getting a bit embarrassed by it um, but it, 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 it has now stopped fortunately um, but the, the, the question is how you how you keep them engaged and engagement is really difficult because it's not just about sending messages it's about understanding individuals as people and conversing with them on a human level this might be a computer thing, but at the end of the computer thing is a person sat there who has got all the range of emotions and thoughts and hopes and dreams as you have, and fears. And to be honest, that little bit, that tiny little thing, is really difficult for most advertising and marketing plans. It doesn't really fit in very well. But it's all about discussion and chat, and it's personal. 
And it's about searching out people who don't like you and talking to them too. It's all counterintuitive. A few months ago, um, apropos of nothing, other than I saw a, a, an article on, I think it was the BBC News website, I sent out a tweet to no one really, I was just moaning, um, criticising the BBC's decision to commission Walk on the Wild Side. If you don't know, it's the programme on Saturday nights. And I know I'm going to get another bit of abuse for this, but I will say it anyway. Saturday nights, uh, where they use wildlife photography and then comedians do voiceovers. And I hate it. I find it completely inane. But it gets great ratings, so, you know, great. Uh, but I didn't like it. And I said I didn't like it. Um, and it was only a short message, but I just pointed out I didn't like it. Now, within a couple of minutes of me sending that, I got a tweet from Jason Manford, who does one of the, who is a comedian who does some of the voiceovers. Um, and there was a bit of banter <laughs> went on, at which I said, look, it's not exactly porridge, is it? And he said, they're not making that anymore, get over it. Um, but there was no reason for him to take the time to do that. I didn't know the man, I've never met the man. But I've got a connection with him now, and I actually feel quite kindly towards him because he took the time out to have a go back at me, which is kind of strange. But I ha I've had a conversation with him, um, and he took the time just to turn around to me and have a go back, which was kind of nice. Um, and that's kind of what you have to do. You have to realise that people do sometimes just want something back um, when we moan. There is normally a purpose for it. We're not just sounding off. Um, and a number of businesses have opened up communications channels on social media specifically to do that. Um, and I just want to quickly touch on two of them because they're particularly well known for it. One is Virgin Media and one is O2. Now, I've had um, calls to want to contact both of them recently uh, with two extremely different results. And I think it shows how once you've decided to engage, you can get it right and get it wrong. I um, have had a number of issues with O2, um, which weren't getting resolved, so I tried to tweet them. Um, I sent a number of tweets just out into the ether and directly to them, explaining that I was having problems. Some of my own tribe, without being asked, contacted O2 via Twitter and explained to them they really needed to get in contact with me because I was getting really annoyed and I was likely to just generate bad publicity for them. They ignored it. In the end, I got through to the managing director's office, I spoke to someone there, and in discussion they told me that they had this communication channel open, but they didn't necessarily have enough people to man it. Now, you either do it or you don't. And if you don't, that's fine. But I'm a great believer that if you're going to have a phone line installed into your office and tell people what the number is, you should probably pick the phone up. Because otherwise you're not doing yourself any favours. If you're not going to engage with people, don't pretend you are. Now I know a lot of people have had a good experience with O2, but that's because they've managed to be one of the ones that gets picked up by it. If you haven't got enough people to do this, do the stuff, you need to tell people that. By complete contrast, my experience with Virgin Media was, it couldn't have been more dif different. People were digging up the road outside the house, my broadband went down. I tweeted from my iPhone. Has the broadband gone down? I'm with Virgin Media. I had, within um, a couple of minutes, I had a tweet from one of their workers. Not on an, not on an official capacity, but we all, knew, we all know him as someone that works for Virgin Media. He contacted me said, what's the problem? I'm going to send you a direct message. Ask my phone number and ask for my postcode. I then, a couple of minutes after that, got a, got a tweet from the official Virgin Media line saying, what can we do? Can we help? While I was typing the reply to that, my phone rang because the guy who works but wasn't actually customer service had taken the time to send the, the message through to their phone to people and tell them to contact me. That was within a couple of minutes. If I'd called them up, it probably would have taken longer for them to get through. But it, it, it was a perfect example of how it, would work, it should work. And clearly what Virgin Media have told people to do is go out and scout the brand. 
if someone mentions something, you're part of that team. Whether or not you're part of the official team, you get it sorted out. And that's the way you want to do it. So your employees become part of the non-official channel. And that's quite an important concept because although we all have official channels, businesses also have employees. And it's in everyone's interest within a business that the business works. So if someone hears something, it makes perfect sense for it to be dealt with within those channels. Um, now, if you get a moment, I, I would say, um, so this is going to go online at some stage, do try and find um, Olivier Blanchard, the, the brand builder. He's coming to a conference in Exeter called Like Minds quite soon. He's a man that genuinely understands um, brand and social media. If you're interested for business purposes, he's really someone you need to talk to. Um, his view of the evolution of social media over the coming months and coming year is that the, um, the, the multi-purpose go-to guy for social media is going to disappear. An acknowledgement that actually social media is saying you're going to be in charge of social media is like saying you're going to be in charge of the whole everything, marketing, advertising, any outfacing stuff, answering the phone, the whole lot. It isn't, a realistic, it, it isn't a realistic way of looking at what is a very, very diverse industry. And uh, the other thing is that um, social media is going to stop being a business add-on in the next year and it's going to be something that's fully integrated. And I do genuinely believe that's, that's true and that's what's likely to happen. And now we get to the bit which is, is arguably going to be the shortest bit of the, of, of the whole talk, to be honest. Um, the law. <sighs> okay. The law on social media is the same as the law anywhere else. Uh, there's no magic to this. Um, we talked about the social media as being this wonderful, amazing, free thing where everyone can talk and say whatever they want. They can't. It's like anywhere else. Um, you, it, it isn't just this anarchical playground where anything goes. And people do need to, to think about what they're putting out there from a personal point of view as well as a business point of view. Clearly, on a business basis, you can do a lot of damage using social media as well as a lot of good. But from a personal basis, I want to just give you two examples of, uh, of, of, of recent, um, uh, recent legal issues that have been brought up. Um, a couple of weeks ago, a uh, chap called Paul Chambers was due to fly out of Robin Hood Airport, um, but you may remember it was a bit snowy a couple of weeks ago, so the airport was shut, so he, he switched his Twitter on, and he posted, uh, and I apologise for the language in this, um, Robin, Ho Robin Hood Airport is closed, you've got a week and a bit to get your shit together, otherwise I'm blowing the airport sky high. Now, he wasn't going to blow the airport sky high, he was just sounding off and it was a joke. Um, if any of you listen to the Photo Legal uh, podcast, you'll know that the police uh, will any excuse to arrest someone under Section 44, uh, probably me on the way home after having said that, um, they arrested him under Section 44 and questioned him for seven hours, the majority of which was him trying to explain to the policeman what Twitter was. So that's good use of everyone's time. Um, and he's now been bailed to, uh, to return. I'm guessing someone, <laughs> very possibly, yeah. Um, the ones that could actually get in because everyone else would have been snowed in. I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe it goes back to the point that, that everybody that uh, works for you is, is potentially a, an evangelist of the brand. Maybe they went out looking for it and then, uh, th then emailed it in. I mean, you know, it's, it's entirely possible. Um, so, yeah, so he, he's now bailed to appear. Um, uh, he's bailed to appear next month. I've hideously lost my place, uh, but he, he's bailed to appear next month, um, and he will, uh, where are we, there we are, um, and I suspect actually nothing will happen to him at all, but that's just, uh, that's just a, a, a view. Um, the other, uh, the, the, yes, sorry, um, Yeah, the other uh, example was um, from Flickr, which was actually the independent newspaper. 
Um, Flickr, if you're not aware, is, is a photo sharing website. Um, the independent newspaper was using a piece of software that connected through the appy onto Flickr and had put in UK snow to try and find a photograph for its newspaper. Um, the appy doesn't actually um, pass through the information about the copyright notices on the photos. So the independent um, used a photograph that was uh, all rights reserved. Um, <laughs> the photographer wrote to the independent and said, you've stolen one of my photographs. They said, this is a quote, we took a stream from Flickr, which is, as you know, a photo sharing website. The legal assumption, I love it when people who don't know what the legal assumption is use that word. The legal assumption, therefore, is that you were not asserting your copyright in that arena. We did not take the photo from Flickr, nor present it as anything other than it is shown there. I do not, therefore, consider that any copyright has been breached or any payment due. The person that wrote that then asked their lawyers, who went, do you know what? Um, <laughs> they changed their mind and they're now paying him. But it, it does go back to something that I think we've probably been saying since the beginning of time, beginning of the internet. Just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's free. Much in the same way that if you now go out onto the street and someone has left their car by the side of the road, doesn't mean you can take it. They might have just parked. Yeah. Um, so it, 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 that's very true on on social media. Um, that there is there is this assumption that if something is apparently shared, um, that you can just take it. But if someone's asserted their rights over it, it may only be. Um, that they've shared it within that context. It doesn't mean you can take it. Um, all the other laws to do with employment, to do with um, intellectual property theft, to do with trademark abuse, um, to do with terrorism, they all still apply. It just happens to be that you're on a social media site. And when I started all this off, I thought to myself, how do I end it? And I thought well, a great way of ending it was to have some predictions of what's going to happen in 24 months' time. I didn't realise because of the date that actually 24 hours would have been pushing it. But um, here we go. Subject to what happens tomorrow, okay, when all of this is then rubbish. So this won't last 24 hours. Uh, these are my thoughts of what will probably happen in the next 24 months. Um, my, my first two are um, to do with the development of existing sites. I do see them being simplified down. I do see the sheep going. I, it's, I know it's a, a prayer and a hope and all the rest of it, but I don't see the point of it. In the long term, I don't see it carrying on. I can see all sorts of other things that are on Facebook that are generally a waste of time carrying on. I can see the games going on. I can see the mob wars stuff going on. I, can, I get that. But there are some things on there that are so pointless that Facebook can't be bothered to integrate them into their iPhone app. And it, I think that as we move towards more portability of social media, I think those are the things that are going to end up dropping off the edge. I also think there's going to be greater specialism, although I don't necessarily think it's always going to work. I think that you'll find... Um, I think you will find um, sites like Foursquare, Bright, Kite and Go Waller um, initially starting off quite well. These are all sites that um, uh, use geolocation um, and uh, sharing uh, where you are and, and reviews of, of where you are with a game element as well uh, for some of them. I, I don't see that that adds that much to what you can do on Twitter other than the game element. Now, the caveat with that is I do appreciate that people like collecting stuff. There is still a small part of me every World Cup that wants to go out and get the Panini album, okay? Because they want to collect stuff. That may be why this works. Maybe there's always that thing in us that we want to collect stars or whatever it is. Um, this, <laughs> this is the lamest prediction ever. Twitter's going to properly integrate search. Um, Twitter is going, to, is going to try and do everything it can to keep you on site so that it can generate income. And search will be the first thing. I suspect TwitPick um, will no longer be a separate issue. I think you will start hosting stuff on site as much as possible, and keeping as much of it on, uh, on site as possible while keeping the functionality simple. I think things will move towards more portability, notwithstanding that tomorrow there might be kind of a proper sized tablet thing coming out. I'll ruin that one. So forget about that one. Uh, that one will that one only lasts for 24 hours. Uh, after that, it, bigger things will be bigger. Um, Google Wave will become a player, but I think it's going to have some 
it's going to have a rocky road because it, it doesn't it's the way it's been launched I don't think is clever um, it's got people on there but not enough to make it a proper um, a proper social network it's not good enough to use the functionality of it properly and not enough people that are on there no other people on there um, businesses are going to start to encourage employees to go on social networks which is going to come as a shock towards the end of the year. I do believe that. I think we'll go from a position where p people are actually discouraged from using it to actually encouraged to go out and find out what's going on. Because some, a little switch will go and it will say, we send you out for a few hours each month to go and do some marketing thing and to go and talk to someone. And yet you know hundreds of people online. And it's there. The computer's there. You don't have to travel. I don't have to pay for a train ticket. I don't have to feed you. Sit in front of the computer room go on to Facebook and tell them that you like it here and you do great things and you have, you have a new widget that they could buy. Uh, I, th I do think that's the way they had it. Will, it will click. It's, it's a cheaper thing. You have this massive network of people. Imagine, you, imagine you've got in a business 50 employees and all of them have got 400 people on Facebook. That's a lot of people. Assuming that they're not all just uh, friends with each other, of course. Um, the last two are a bit measurable. Um, the politicians will realise that there's a thing called social media because they will have just won an election with it. And they will think, what a great thing it is. And then a few months down the line, they go, oh, I wonder if we can regulate and tax it. And they will try. And then there'll be a big campaign to stop it and then it will all fall apart. But they will try. They really will try. And the last thing is my last moan. Okay, UK is, is going to get 4G like last out of everyone everyone in the world will have it before we get it because the, all the mobile companies paid too much last time for 3G so that's it that's our punishment we'll probably get 5G a bit quicker but 4 not so much so stick with what you've got um, and the network's not going to get any faster apart from the fact that tomorrow a tablet will come out that will be like it'll be 10G and it'll be that big and it'll be super light this will all be wrong anyway thanks very much